Hello and welcome. In this video, we have three main objectives. Explore how Salesforce order management helps orchestrate the post-purchase experience. Discuss key implementation considerations. Get familiar with the Salesforce order management interface. All right, let's start with why Salesforce order management matters. Imagine you've received multiple orders and now it's time to fulfill them. This is where order management comes into play. It's like the conductor of a symphony, ensuring every part of the process works in harmony. Salesforce order management helps orchestrate the post-purchase experience. It ensures that once a customer places an order, everything runs smoothly from order creation to delivery. This includes real-time inventory management, dynamic routing of orders, payment processing, and handling returns or exchanges. Now let's talk about implementation considerations. When setting up Salesforce order management, you need to plan carefully. First, make sure you have a qualified and experienced implementation partner. You'll also need to determine if you'll use standard accounts and contacts or person accounts to represent your shoppers, as you may want to customize the matching logic and identify other data syncing between Commerce and Salesforce Core to meet your specific business use cases. Lastly, define your overall data strategy for connecting B2C Commerce and the Salesforce Core platform, taking into consideration other Salesforce products you may have, such as Service Cloud and Marketing Cloud. Next up, let's get to know the Salesforce order management interface. Here you'll see a clean, user-friendly dashboard with easy-to-navigate tabs and features. It's designed to make your work efficient and productive. Within the interface, you'll find tabs for orders, customer information, available actions, and more. Each section is dedicated to specific tasks related to order management. It's like having different tools in your toolbox for different tasks. Let's walk through searching for an order. From the default order summary list view, we'll toggle the view to all order summaries. Now we can use the search bar to look up a specific order number. Now we can click in and see the full order record. We can also open up the navigation bar on the left-hand side of the screen and use the same search functionality to find any other orders that we may need. Now let's take a look at the order summary that we just opened. We can collapse this list view and review the customer information around this order, such as the order totals, the shipping address, order payments, and the line item details down here. And on the left-hand side, we have this actions and recommendations component. This allows you to perform actions on the order, such as canceling, returning an item, or applying an appeasement, which is a discount. Let's start with the cancel item flow. We'll click this cancel item button and it will launch in a new tab. Now we can select the item that the customer wishes to cancel and click next. Then you'll be prompted to select a reason code, which explains why the customer wants to cancel the item. Once you've selected a reason code, you have the option to remove the shipping amount as well. And then we can click Next. The subsequent page will confirm the cancellation as well as showing the impact to the order totals. If everything looks good, we can scroll down and click Submit. The cancellation was successful. And on our order page, we can now see the line item that we just canceled is now marked as canceled. Next, Let's see how to make an appeasement, such as free shipping or applying a discount on an item. We can switch to a different order here and navigate to the discount item action in the recommendations component. Once we click on that, we can select the item that we want to provide a discount on. If it's not the shipping, you'd pick one of the products listed here. We'll pick men's kilowatt quarter zip and select next. You will then have the option to either provide a discount amount as dollar value or a percent of the total of the item. In this case, we can provide a 20% discount. We also want to select a reason for the discount. In this case, we'll mark this product as having been damaged, and then there's also an optional place to leave a note for why the discount was made. Then we'll click Next, and the next screen will confirm the discount being applied as well as the effects it will have on the order totals. From here, we can scroll down and click Submit. Now we'll see that the discount was successful, and once we click Finish, we can go back to the order summary, down to the line items here, and the line adjustments field will show us that discount that was applied to this product. Returns can be handled in the same way. We can navigate back to the Actions and Recommendations component 
and click on the RMA Return Item button here, it'll launch the appropriate flow. We can select the item that the customer wants to return, then click Next. And then, under Reason Code, again, we want to select the reason why the customer wants to return the item. You also have the option here to remove the shipping amount. Once we click Next, we can review a summary of this return, then we'll hit Submit, and the return is finished. Now if we look at the line items here, we'll see that the return has been initiated for that product. So, let's recap our learning objectives. Explored how order management orchestrates the post-purchase experience seamlessly. Covered key implementation considerations. Got to know the user-friendly interface and its core functionalities. That's a wrap for our screencast on Salesforce order management. For more information, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Salesforce tutorials and tips. Have a great day.